Hello my soccer universe, ah, it's definitely the most exciting thing uh, happening so far this season for me personally and you know for most of the fans, a lot, especially Lask fans in Linz is the new stadium is opening on Friday the 24th of February for the first time for a proper Lask game um, and it also has to, has to be said in the whole development there's another smaller stadium being built in Linz for the other team that is potentially coming up to the Bundesliga next season. So there's a lot of things happening in Linz and it is super exciting. But uh, while a new stadium is always something very, very exciting, is I personally have never thought that I will see this day, which makes it extra exciting. And I thought I'll make a little video telling a little bit about the story. I also visited the stadium um, two days before the opening, made a, sh a series of short videos, which you can uh, see linked up there. And also summarized my thoughts uh, of seeing the stadium for the first time up close, which is of course also quite exciting. So yeah, but before we look at the new stadium, uh, I actually wanted to tell you the history about the old stadium. And it's a history in four episodes that I want to say, um, which are of course named after a very popular movie franchise. So let's start off. By just time, this is probably the longest episode and it has to be said that when I started being a Lusk fan, the, you know, the stadium in Linz is, was built in 1952, which is also the birth uh, year of my father, which I found very interesting. And it was built up on a hill above the city, um, which at the time was of course rather open, but it was built as a typical stadium of the time with, a, you know, there's an athletics track and it had a very distinctive um, horseshoe shape. So there was one side open, which I think was also due to the fact that, you know, it is built in a hill, but then on the other side, it was a little bit more open because the hill is uh, falling down. When I started going to stadium, this was in the early 90s, it had a... Um, seating area that was covered and then also on the along the sides it was also covered which of course then invited the fan groups to stay unusual for a stadium not uh, behind the goals but on the sides and each of the two teams that were uh, playing there this was Lusk and this is was um, first Linz which we became then FC Linz and meanwhile their fans go to FC Blavis Linz but a whole different story there uh, which uh, were then had their own sections and the away fans curious enough were next to the standing area uh, to the seating area uh, in the behind the goal which also meant that in the TV broadcast you could hear them much more loudly. Um, then of course the whole um, curve uh, got covered which um, kind of gave it a very unique look so they're all seats covered and then in the mid 90s this was the biggest Bundesliga stadium in Austria capable of holding up to uh, 20,000 and I, I'm, we were kind of proud we have the biggest stadium da, 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 da. and then even the referees like the stadium well of course there's an athletic track uh, people aren't getting on you however it became then relatively clear during the mid late 90s that something new had to happen and the thing is that a stadium in Graz was built for 15,400 which was a pure soccer arena and you could see a difference. And then uh, also in Innsbruck, a new stadium was built. And it was kind of the age where, yes, new, uh, uh, we need soccer specific stadiums. And so also Lask wanted to have one and to add insult to injury, not only got Lask into deep financial trouble, so this could not have uh, happen. The local other team, Reed, was able to build also a soccer specific arena, which opened in 2003. And at that time, Lask had a whole other problems. Um, and it was only when they got promoted back in 2007 to the Bundesliga and celebrating the 100th anniversary that a new stadium needs to be built for Lask. And the city of Linz, this was kind of for the 100 years, there was a huge announcement. There is an intention to build a new stadium and the city of Linz will contribute, I think it was 8 million euros at the time, to that project and of course then there were loads of um, things, uh, loads of um, um, sites being uh, examined, 
My personal favorite would have been to build it over the at, uh, next to the railway station over the tracks uh, because it's anyway at that area and it would have been really cool for you know you have the public connection everything like that of course it would have been super expensive. Now what was the trouble with the old stadium? Not only because there was the athletics track and it was not very purpose built uh, but the problem prob the, the prob is because of events happening in the stadium like the famous it doesn't happen it was a track and field meeting which was a big event in Linz for a long time that the two teams from Linz at times couldn't play in their own stadium which belonged to the city and they were kind of renting out um, which meant that uh, there had to be games played in a nearby town called Wells or that Lusk for some time even played in Schwanenstadt which is a good 45 minute drive from Linz uh, to play in a very small stadium so it never really worked out the relationship between the city of Linz and the two teams were never re really working out in, in addition there was no influence on gastronomy you basically yeah you had to make your own VIP club but it never really uh, you never got the income that you need from your own stadium which in the end led that when Lusk finally was taken over in 2013 by the friends of Lusk that uh, they after a few years of renting and, and so on they said okay we're not gonna play in the stadium we gonna we went to Pushing where they kind of took the local team which had been rather good in the 2000s and the early 2020s even winning the Austrian Cup as a third league team uh, there was a fusion between those two teams and Lusk played the home games right there with the intent of finding a new stadium within the city limits because there were the 8 million euros uh, that could be contributed. In the meantime, and this is where I end the, the um, first episode, is that the city of Linz renovated the old stadium at a horrendous cost limiting the size so much that it was not even enough to host the national team without paying a penalty which is ridiculous to begin with uh, and then even the track and field meet didn't uh, happen so this was uh, really wasting taxpayer money to the highest degree to have a sort of modern but really really old stadium Okay, so the new ownership group took over, we need a new stadium, we will find something and then they, after a long finding, uh, pro uh, searching process, uh, it was clear that it will be more in the south of Linz where it's not as hilly. They announced that right on the edge in the southeast, it's called, uh, next to a uh, little lake, we built there. And then the first hell broke loose because a hey, this is uh, yes it's next to the interstate, which is or the autobahn, which is really nice. However, there was no public transportation going there except for a train station that could probably be built there. So you had that, and then maybe there was a tramway connection, which I think this would have worked, but it was really really far out in a way. But it was still in Linz. However, this was a newly also newly built residential neighborhood, and of course. Everyone there was against the project and uh, they destroyed the uh, nature and whatever of this lake which received actually a lot which receives a lot of people that want to bathe in the summer there. Many more people than would go actually to a stadium uh, where you know here and there you would get something. So I found the whole discussion around it. Uh, rather tedious and at times nonsensically but then again I'm a last fan I want to finally have a new stadium that you know either have it in Linz but something new needed to be built and of course there's always someone unhappy with what was going to happen um, so after a long discussion and the whole announcement and then I think they said 21 if, we, if they should start playing there um, but then there was a whole lot of political trouble there was enough signatures were being collected to stop the stadium uh, more or less or they needed to be discussed and so the city and the um, upper Austrian government basically came together and found a wise solution basically saying we give Lusk the rights to the old stadium for 99 years 
uh, starting I think in two th in 2020 or something like that or maybe two th late 2000 not late 2009 not to, to in 2020 we give them the right to that in addition we allow the other team who has been playing there to build their stadium on top of a warehouse um, of a newly built uh, you know furniture store very close to the arena that they already had which was really time which is close to the Danube, which is actually a really, really nice location. Because let's put, let's face the old uh, neighborhood, as you will see in my uh, local video, is built, is more or less within a res residential area. And since it's up on the hill, there will be no tramway going up there. So it has to be all relying on buses, which is not that great. However, it's a historic site. Of course, uh, since this is an Olympic area there where, you know, um, you should all major Olympic sports unit, what to do with the athletics uh, field. So they had to find a solution for that as well to get all the track and field people build a purpose uh, built stadium for there as well. And hooray in 2020, it was announced a new stadium will be built. Nice. And at the beginning of the 22-23 season, it should open. And the last community was rejoicing. Of course, getting a project started was not <laughs> so easy because first you had to tear down the old stadium. Okay, that was done relatively quickly. I think they played some Europa League fixtures and the Bundesliga fixtures in early in late 2020. And then in 2021, within a few months, the stadium was done. And then the new one should have been already built. However, there were major, major troubles, especially within the ownership group, the so-called friends of Lusk, hence Keith being friends and da da da. Uh, they did not see eye to eye. They say, oh, it will be more expensive than it will be. It was said it will cost around 65 million and financing was kind of, you know, uh, the government will pay, uh, I think, a certain uh, sum. I think it was up to 30. Then the rest will be uh, with regional sponsors, namely the bank, who is the main sponsor. And it has also now a sleeve sponsor of Lusk. Uh, will contribute another third, 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 five, and you know, uh, with a good ownership model, seemingly it should fine. But costs seemingly were exploding, um, which is still not quite sure how much it exploded. But uh, seemingly it now it's claimed it's just one percent, but it was claimed that the uh, the price will be not sixty five million, but maybe even one hundred twenty million because the stadium. Uh, has all these nice features like a little kindergarten in there or then a little uh, OP room, uh, you know, that uh, players could be treated right in the stadium if there's an injury happening uh, and all kinds of other things. It, it was spiffy and the most modern thing ever. And all of this trouble caused already that uh, the stadium was under a bad light. Then to give the contract, this was not done proper properly, so this had to be all delayed, it had to be a new contract, had to be given out. Uh, so that was already a half year delay and to add insult to injury for the second time, once the stadium got underway in 2022, there was also a stop because seemingly the basement was much larger being built than was actually approved, but fortunately that also got taken care of rather quickly and i have to say since you know the spring yes there were always rumors that it may have been too expensive and maybe it's too much money spent than was intended but overall it all went relatively smooth and the new stadium built up and was set to open at least partially uh now that games could be played because you had to move out the arena in Pushing because there this was also an residential area. So yeah, it all happened and everything went fine.
two days before the official opening of the new Lask Stadium or the first Lask game at the new Lask Stadium. The women already have played here the previous weekend in a trial run. And yes, I'm standing here in front of the stadium. It's not the side where we will be actually sitting. We will be sitting exactly on the other side. But this is where I used to enter the stadium, the old stadium and the entrance area. You see here the ticketing kiosks and then the entire entrance area is the same except that you don't enter directly into the stadium uh, as it was previously where I see already field no you go to a, a little area which is kind of a fan village that has been constructed then you enter the stadium what's also pretty remarkable is that you see the entrance area this roof this was the height of the old stadium and it was basically then a little bit of a ditch <laughs> you know it was going then downhill to the uh, playing edge surface the playing surface remains the same but the stadium is so much higher uh, which is really, really impressive, I gotta say. Um, it holds uh, about 6,000 more than the previous iteration, so slow, uh, slightly be, uh, lower 20,000. I think the official one is 19,000. 80 uh, people will fit into the stadium, um, and the previous one had a, uh, roughly 13,600. However, when I started going here to the old stadium, when it was still mostly all standing room, it could also hold around 20,000. So uh, it's about the same size. I still find it a teeny bit undersized. I think I would have given it five, if not 6,000 more, given the demand for it. But what it really, I really love the architecture, honestly. It's a little bit um, asymmetric, which is also cool. Uh, and that it uh, like elevates it out but also leaving a little bit more space because it is built in a residential area I mean I give you now the full tour overall there are this bus stop there are people living here which is the one thing that's the big downside for me that the stadium is built is still in a residential area when it was first built it was no residential area uh, or there were little people living here but that is maybe the one downside and I also worry about um, you know we have the bus stop here but the capacity of the buses there is no uh, tram that you can put up so this is basically a little bit of a downside here however i am very much looking forward to seeing finally a uh, game in the stadium and i'm even more excited that my family is coming uh with me so it's always fun but yeah this is two days before the opening as it's hustling and bustling everywhere which is also very interesting so yeah in any case i will report more from the actual game day now, numbers-wise, it will put Lask definitely in a different dimension. Uh, you know, it is meant that for Bundesliga games, only the lower part will be open to public and only if demand is higher to open the upper rows. Of course, I have to say, uh, there is also some misgiving with uh, the tickets for the opening round. Now, I where you can either buy a season a half season ticket for all the remaining games in the in this in the 23 uh spring season so basically that's seven games or you only could buy tickets for the first two which were priced relatively high with a standing room ticket 25 and a seating uh 50. um so basically rather expensive however i have to say that the season or the half season tickets were rather reasonable price especially if you're family uh where i had then i really wanted to go to the opening game and my uh options were either i spent because i wanted to have at least my wife with me uh wife slash or father but to pay for two seats for two games i paid 200 euros or i get for all the remaining games and i pay 230 for the entire family uh, so that was kind of a no-brainer, still a little bit more than I would have expected. Now, Lask is saying, um, given that the stadium is not quite finished yet, yes, it's operational for match use, but it's not quite finished yet, we don't actually want to have that many people right there. There will be a grand opening some other time, but for that, maybe it's good to limit it and really get only season ticket holders there. We got our season tickets, which were delivered in these really, really, really nice boxes. Uh, and I open up one box for you. I hold down the QR code because, you know, it's my, <laughs> these the, the, the are my tickets. Uh, it, the box shows, of course, the new layout of the stadium. Uh, and, you know, down, uh, those are the chip cards that will be used. Uh, as I said, the stadium has a nice asymmetric, there are many sky boxes in there. I think it uh, will look really, really fine. 
we will be going to the opening Friday evening and I will definitely make a video to give you my impressions from the stadium. But I mean, a huge deal, a new stadium is always a huge deal for um, a team. But that it happens in Linz where I never expected it to happen. I needed to make a video about it and I hope you enjoyed this little excursion in the history behind the stadium. And as I said, we will report and you will get another video probably on Saturday on that game. In any case, please let me know if you were part of a new stadium opening for your team. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.